Good morning, good afternoon, good night everyone. We are at Walt Disney Studios Park in Disneyland Paris. I didn't really get to experience it the other day because I was running around doing all the rides. Go check out that video if you haven't already. And we're gonna talk about, is it worth it to come to this park specifically right now or maybe should you wait? Right off the bat, I love the entrance to Walt Disney Studios. Reminds me of Hollywood Studios over in Orlando, Florida. And we have awesome music from Disney movies. It just gets you excited for the day. Speaking about Hollywood Studios, they basically recreated Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard and one little alleyway. You got stores and merchandise to your left and right. They even have the Brown Derby restaurant inside. Their face painting stations in all of Disneyland Paris are so much cooler. Like they actually have a whole marquee. A last chance gas. The Hepcat corner drinks and snacks, coffee, pizzas, ice cream, tiki tiki, loosely based off Polynesian, I guess. I haven't eaten today, so I would like to eat here, but I want to save my appetite for somewhere better, hopefully. It's just a crazy mix of different settings in one small area. <laughs> Little neon Hawaiian girl dancing. They even have a second floor for eating, just in case downstairs gets a little too packed. And oh my gosh, is that a magic carpet? This might just be the largest magic carpet to exist in a Disney theme park. I think the entrance to this park does a great job of recreating that hustle and bustle feel when you're walking down Sunset Boulevard in Orlando, Florida. It is a little bit of a mess though, but I don't mind, I like the theming regardless. And just like that, we are in the full theme park. To your left, Avengers Campus. To the right, Toon Studio. And to the center, uh, yeah, see, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it right away. They're planning a bunch of new construction, which I'll provide details about later. However, I feel like this is kind of lazy. Like, this kind of ruins all of Disney's imagineering, storytelling. I mean, the least they could have done, I feel, is put like a mark like a, a wall or more city buildings to block the big cranes that really takes away from you know disney parks in general and this is me not dogging on the park i absolutely had a blast here yesterday and i'm gonna have more fun today but seriously as a former cast member we talk about uh keeping the show this is the stage and if it was an amusement park i i wouldn't care about that but this is walt disney right like this is you pay to be immersed in a magical world, experiences, stories, and that that's just, no. Like, that's probably the laziest thing I've seen a Disney park do. And just because I love Disney so much, here's like a second-hand option. Maybe create a building or a wall just for this part, so when you walk in, it's not that obvious. I mean, to the left and the right, I understand that would be a lot of area to cover, a lot of construction. But just put up some kind of wall, just how you have these guys. Well, I guess looking back at it, that does look like a lot of metal and steel and probably would take more time. But this is going to be a two, three year, you know, <laughs> transformation. So I feel like it's worth the investment. Now, all of this construction started before the pandemic, but we're going to have Arendelle, which, you know, frozen. Let it go is iconic. One thing I definitely want to do today is see Mickey and the Magician. And I just found out that you can actually pay extra to secure your seats. I'm not gonna do that. Um, I think it was like, what, $17 per ticket? I love this hat. And I just noticed that Peter Pan, Wendy, and Tinkerbell are flying above it. And below it, we have some iconic characters. Look how cute Mickey looks. Tinkerbell, Hercules, heck yeah, Tarzan. These are super cute, Mulan, Pinocchio, Dumbo. Now you can do a character meeting group of Olaf here and they have the drawing academy in this building, which is pretty dope. Mickey and the Magician. Here is the theater where you can watch it. A show's happening in about 50 minutes. Cast members told me to come at least 40 minutes early to make sure that you get a good seat. I'm gonna go for a later show. As a former cast member, when I hear children screaming, I just freak out and I wanna make sure everything's okay. And we literally have a whole corner for kids just to scream, which is a great idea, but also a horrible idea. <laughs> With expansions on the way, that's all great. But right now, there's significantly less rides in this park, only 11 to be precise, which means the wait queue times will be a little bit longer. Crush's coaster usually stays around 60 to 45 minutes throughout the day. Oh, I apologize. Single ride is at a 60 minute wait. Standby is at 80. The nice thing though is Premier Access, which is basically Genie Plus. 
For 13 euros, you can skip the line. And it's definitely a lot more flexible. All the premier accesses they have available in this park are kind of, you can just purchase one. You don't have to buy a pack. You don't have to do anything. So if you want to go on this ride, the option's definitely there. The next available premier access slot is 315. It's one right now. Personally, I think it's definitely a ride worth going on if you don't mind dark spaces and intense roller coasters. It's a mixture of Space Mountain and Guardians of the Galaxy. It's really fun. Also, don't take this ride for granted. It was a lot of fun. Even though it looks like a little kid ride, I was actually screaming a lot on this. You look like you're about to hit every car. Now it is a Friday, so lines might be longer. I don't really know what they normally are. But that ride's only had a 10 minute wait, which is great to see. We have to stop meeting like this, everybody. Quick pause in the video. I just wanted to say I do have a second channel and I finally figured out what I'm doing with it. I'm gonna be sharing my opinions about Disney, the world, news, honestly, whatever I wanna talk about on that day and if I have very time, it's gonna be there. I have a new video up right now. I'm talking about Splash Mountain and the re-theming. It's very interesting. Go check it out and subscribe. Back to the video. Characters don't roam in this park. They have just meet and greet areas that usually encompass a bunch of characters. So here's like the Pixar meet and greet area. You can meet Woody, Jesse, Mr. Incredible, Mrs. Incredible. And Slinky Dog is standing by to chase his tail. Now get in there, have fun. Toy Story Playland is a fickle one for me because you know, Hollywood Studios has Toy Story Land, which is newer and has more attractions. So I like this area. Like it gives me a nostalgic feeling, but this is definitely on the older side of the park. I know with expansions, they're gonna add some new stuff to this area. Don't get me wrong, the rides are fun. And for my first time visit, I really enjoyed going on all of them. But if you compare it to Toy Story Land, you're gonna be a little disappointed because it's a lot smaller and it's older. The rides remind me more of carnival rides, but I think Disney learned a lot from this park and were able to implement all of their new knowledge to Toy Story Land and Hollywood Studios. Again, I like it, I had fun. It is really funny seeing a different variation of Slinky Dog though. This ride kind of hurt me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't even notice this last time. They have a Rex you can take a picture with, Andy talks. That's awesome. Something that you should be aware about in Disneyland parks, they do still have smoking areas. Another thing that Disney World learned from Disneyland Paris is Ratatouille. This area is a gorgeous. It's literally a spinning image of Epcot. Epcot is actually bigger, but this just feels more authentic. I like it more. And they actually have a restaurant that connects directly to the ride. The ride's at like a 50 minute wait right now. If there's one thing I, that I wanna do is eat at this restaurant, but making reservations online is a little more uh, challenging than just doing it off the app in Disney World. You basically have to go to a third party website, type in your email, where you live. It's just a little more tedious. And for me, eh, I, I was just lazy. Honestly, it's not hard. I was just lazy. That's my fault. But I'm gonna walk in and see if they have any walk-ups. I'm not gonna lie though. It seems very, very crowded in here. These props are so fun. Just adds a whole nother texture to the movie. This is definitely one of the most popular restaurants in this park, so reservations are full for today. So if you guys wanna eat here for yourself, I definitely recommend you book prior online or on your uh, My Disneyland Experience app. Fortunately for me, I was able to actually get a spot just because I'm a person of one today. Aw, I love that. Little message from Remy himself, bon appetit. Wow. It's the end cue of Ratatouille, but now it all makes sense. It's so pretty. There's the bar right there. Wow, this is actually so cool. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. There's Gustav's book. It's table where is the seats. Oh. Thank you. I love it. In Disneyland Paris, they do two prefixed menus. You basically can get the $40, which is an appetizer and main course, or you can get the 55 euro, which is starter, main course, and dessert. Or if you wanna go crazy, $75 for a wine inclusion. And this is the kid's side, 30 euros for starter, main course, dessert, and drink. 
Their entree sounds delicious. Grilled steak, ratatouille, and french fries. The theming in here is awesome. Like, everything's built out of bottle caps, plates, and forks that you're sitting in, you know? They want you to think that you're a rat. I actually really, 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 really like this restaurant. I haven't even eaten here yet. The big bottles of wine. So cool. Everything's just enlarged here. I see desserts, but I don't think we can just pick out those. Chef Remy's fork. There is so much detail in this restaurant. Also, look at the little baby rat. And at the back of the restaurant, you can see people leaving the ride itself. It's good marketing. You can see the restaurant after you smelt all that good stuff in the ride. <laughs> Our appetizer has arrived. I got the duck. I haven't been recording too much of me eating on this trip just because I've been so hungry. But today I'll take a little extra time to eat with you guys because we're by ourselves. So I'm just gonna cut into this it's really solid. Let's dip it in this sauce right here. I'm just gonna just take a bite. I don't know. The texture is a little weird. It has an interesting aftertaste. On my second bite, it tasted a lot better. I think you just don't put too much in your mouth at once. Also, the sauce really makes it. On my second bite, actually, it's pretty good. Just don't put too much in your mouth at one time. And the sauce right here really makes it. You really just gotta drown it in it. Wow, this steak looks good. You can also pick a complimentary steak sauce. I got brie sauce, I didn't know what to pick. So they said in, in France and Paris that they don't really do medium rare. It's either medium or rare. So ask for rare. Let's try it. Ooh, a little bit of a smoky flavor to it. But now the most important thing is the sauce. We're just gonna dip it in. Oh yeah. And we get ratatouille and french fries. I need some ketchup though. Why do I like this so much more? Woo. Yum. That was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it's for everyone. I give my experience a solid eight out of 10. Between the props and the design of the whole restaurant and just me wanting to come here for a long time personally, it was really yummy. Wait time for Ratatouille is at a 30 minute wait. Like even the queue looks almost exactly alike. Dinner ran a little late, which means we're late for the next showing. Five minutes till showtime. Let's see what kind of seat we get. This is exciting. I like how it's about Mickey and the genie. Performance. It's pretty big. Oh my gosh, it goes all the way back. The seats are first come first serve, so I was actually able to get a pretty good spot. But remember, I'm just one person. Come to the voice, Amelita. Beaucoup de ballet. As you can see, needs a good clean. Oui, Monsieur le Magicien. Mais j'ai hâte de faire de la magie. <laughs> but you can't practice your magic, Mickey, until this room is spotless. Where the banquet? De quel banquet parlez-vous? Madame and Monsieur, the kitchen staff proudly requests the honor of your company. Please accept our invitation and be our guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tonight, the proud of your feet, the proud of your feet, be our guest. Be our guest. Be our guest. Bye. 
friend, there are friends you can never had a friend. Magic lives inside all of us. We just need the courage to share it with those we love. Well, I absolutely loved that show. You know, this park might be smaller and they might cram a lot of random properties into it, but I still get that Disney magic. And especially after watching that show, that was so much fun. You know, a smaller group of characters, but a good selection, all about magic, as you saw. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting the live singers. That was such a delightful surprise. I might have teared up a little bit. I feel like for some reason in there, it hit me that I was actually in Europe, you know, watching Mickey speak French. It was just really cute, and it, 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 was, it wasn't anything crazy, but it was heartwarming, and I love it. Solid 10 out of 10. Definitely gotta see that show for yourself. Um, I had no idea this was happening. I just heard an announcement. Apparently the live action Ariel is about to come out. Has she even come out in Walt Disney World yet? Wow, the hype is real. That was so cool, I had no idea. I forgot that Ariel came out today worldwide, so now there's meet and greets dropping for the live action Ariel, which I absolutely love. I'll have to meet her back at Disney's Hollywood studio soon. Anyways, this park is pretty small. We basically covered 75% of it. All we got left is Avengers Campus. One noticeable difference is that this Avengers Campus is much smaller, which means characters do not roam. One spot you can meet your favorite Marvel characters is at this one meet and greet location where you actually queue up for them. You can see Black Widow, Black Panther, and Spider-Man all chilling up there. It's pretty cool. Oh! You have the same Spider-Man ride here as in Disneyland Anaheim. Over here they have an extra ride, Flight Force. Basically the re-theming of Rock and Roller Coaster. It's been received with mixed reviews. Personally, I really enjoyed it as someone who's never been on the ride. Oh man. Oh my god. <laughs> I love Loki, he's so funny. Oh man, these two are awesome. Oh, please, I'm just not as enthusiastic when meeting your short sighted followers. <laughs> it's my turn now. Skin me up. Your question. Who is your favorite as guardian? And ponder that question carefully. The correct answer is obviously me, Loki, of course. 
Very good, Skelmir, very good. Well, it was never in doubt, after all, brother. Évidemment. Is he not near à la base? Et soulève-le, bien sûr. Brother, it's my challenger, then it's my rules. Skelmir, come back. Skelmir, come back. I'm explaining. Come on, Skelmir. Come on. No, 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 no. With your knees. All your knees. Yeah. Well, never mind. Never mind. Let me do it. Let me do it. Attention, il s'est déjà blessé en faisant ça. Use your knees. Oh, that's smart. Come on, with me together. One, two, three. Come on. Et il ne triche pas avec son cœur. Very funny. Sera digne de posséder pour une courte durée et pouvoir le tort. You shall possess, for a limited time only, the power of four. Jeune guerrier, essaye encore, s'il te plaît. Mais cette fois-ci, pense à toutes tes bonnes actions. Pense-y fort et soulève le mien. Try again, please. Go now. Yes. Come on. Yes, again. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Tu dit, je le savais. Bravo. Je suis fier de toi. Viens, rejoins-moi. Tu peux me garder le mien. Viens. Immortalisons ce moment tous ensemble. Quel mien? Would you come back? Oh. Even though it might be smaller, Avengers Campus still has fun shows and characters that everyone seems to really enjoy, <laughs> including French Thor. <laughs> Stark Factory. This is completely different from the other Avengers Campus. It has pizza and pasta. As you make your way through Avengers Campus, they have a little like cart where you can get snacks and they also have this little diner. But then that's Pretty much it. To my knowledge, this is about a $2.7 billion expansion that they're working on, but it won't be completely done until 2025. They plan on putting like a big lagoon in the center, kind of like the style of Epcot, where it will host like maybe a Fantasmic show. It's all speculation at this point. There's nothing confirmed. Arendelle is definitely gonna be in it. I think they're gonna ex ex uh, expand Toy Story Land. And now I'm seeing conflicting reports of there still being a Star Wars Land and not being a Star Wars Land. I really hope they get a Star Wars land. Regardless, if you guys know any more information, let me know down below. I will definitely be back here in 2025 to see what comes of this. This is my promise to all of you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe because Paris has been a fun time. And honestly, Disneyland Paris Park, absolutely loved it. Posted or like a tiny review about that the other day. And this place, it's good. It has heart. It has so much going for it and I absolutely love it and I can tell that Disneyland Paris really wants to make this park the next big hit which it might be honestly it's pretty awesome I mean you got Tower Terra right there it's fun I went on it it's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy in Disneyland Anaheim but with the theming of uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios a cool mix but the question still stands should you come to Disneyland now or should you wait is it worth it I think Disneyland Park as a whole is worth it. The other park, Disneyland, is complete. The 30th anniversary is going on there. They have an amazing fireworks show, an amazing drone show. They have the Animal Kingdom show. All the rides are awesome. Big Thunder is lovely. The Phantom Manor, it's great. This park is incomplete. And there's definitely points in times when I'm in this park where you really feel that. Now, am I gonna say don't come to Disneyland Paris until 2025? No. If you wanna come, if you can afford it, go. But don't break the bank for it, I guess, right? Like, go to Disney World or go to Anaheim or maybe even like Tokyo. I don't know. I, I don't know what your situation is. The point is, is that Disneyland Paris is not even close to being done. There's so much more coming in this area over here and it's gonna make Avengers Campus that much bigger. I think they're expanding it a little bit too. It's going to be an awesome park. Right now, I personally love it, but it's definitely not a full day park. It's like a half day park. You can definitely do this in a day and a half or if you really wanna spend your time or you can do a full day here, you definitely do not need two days. Bottom line, if you come to Disneyland Paris, expect a full park and then like a half park. This kind of gives me the vibes of Animal Kingdom. Like you're not gonna spend the whole day here unless you want to. There's a lot of restaurants, there is a lot of entertainment, but you can come now. Just know that it's going to be better in like the next three to four years. Go into this park with an open mind. If you compare Toy Story Land to Hollywood Studios, if you compare Avengers Campus to Disneyland and Anaheim, you're gonna be disappointed in some ways, but if you just come in knowing, hey, this is a new park, I'm excited to be here and just have fun with my family, loved ones, and friends, you're gonna have a blast. In other news, I'm upset that Loki or Thor didn't pick me. I wanted to try to pull the hammer. That would've been such funny content. You know it would've been. Always making new friends. What's your name, man? 
Hey, uh, my name is Jose. I'm from the Netherlands. <laughs> and yeah. he, he saw me vlog and he's like, let me grab you a beer. So he did. So thanks, man. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, man. <laughs> For you. By the way, some characters are a little bit harder to meet here at the training center. It's a virtual queue. This is where you can meet Spider-Man and bring your kids in there and do some fun hero stuff. But it's apparently very, very tough to get out. I was just talking to that guy that bought me the beer. I almost forgot to actually come inside and see this pizza place. And I love seeing the Hulkbuster. Look how massive this thing is. But yeah, this is what it looks like inside, kind of giving you that old industrial feeling. Again, this is Stark industry, so this is like old World War II vibes. You can see that they've turned tables from desks. <laughs> and uh, you can see the old cab shield. You can even see Peggy's hat on the wall. I love it, I love it. Let's take a look at Pim's kitchen real quick, just to see how similar it is. Big Pepper, woo! It seems to be more of a restaurant here. Was it always a restaurant in Disneyland? I didn't realize they actually made it into a restaurant. Interesting. This area gives me Disney Junior vibes. Right now they have a Stitch Live, which I'm so happy he has his own show. I did this in Tokyo Disneyland and I'm not gonna do it now. It basically Stitch talks to you. It's kind of like Turtle Talk, but Stitch. And it's pretty awesome. I might come back and do this one day, but not today. I mean, this whole area approaching Tower Terror is sick. I love the theming and the design of it. If anything, the other day when I went on it, I was more scared. But then again, maybe it's just because it was a new Tower Terror. Either way, I would be shocked that they ever tried to do what they did in here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Because there's like a whole like, exorcism moment not really but like a girl is like creeping at you in the hallway it was fun so i'm about to leave and get dinner at one of the resorts here on property hopefully but i'm not gonna just leave without going on a ride and the ride i'm going on is the one that i enjoyed the most which caught me off guard crush's coaster is a great ride and honestly i would really enjoy to go on it again but not this one. For our last ride in Disneyland Paris, we're going on the Cars ride. Ka chow Last ride in Disneyland. Here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this ride is amazing. It's not meant for kids. It's that bird don't too. Whoa! Whoa! Ah! Woo! Ka-chow! <laughs> ah! <laughs> it literally looks like you're about to hit everyone. Oh! Oh my god, I'm fighting gravity right now. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Jeez Louise! <laughs> Woo! That was an experience. Best ride in Disneyland Paris. You know what? Come to Disneyland Paris just for this ride. Well everyone, like the sign says behind me, that's a wrap. It's been a fun day at Walt Disney Studios. It's been overall a great time here at Disneyland Paris Parks. Man, I'm gonna miss it, but I know I'll be back in the next couple years, so I'm not too stressed. At the end of the day, if you wanna come to Paris now, come to Paris now, but if it's gonna be a little hard on the budget, then wait, give it a couple years, because it's gonna be even better. This park, tiny, other park, big, complete, I had fun regardless. Guys, if you enjoyed these Disney videos, make sure you go ahead, like, subscribe, share, ring that bell. I can only do this, I can only travel to all these cool locations because of your support, and it means the world to me. We are traveling back home from Paris to London, then that's gonna be a whole vlog, and I'm gonna check out one of the hotels tonight, so if you wanna see more, uh, stay tuned. Remember, every day is a blessed day to be alive, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.